Hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. Um, yeah, Ethereum get also getting closer and closer here to my target area. And we're going to zoom in in a minute. Now, it is currently developing in a way that I already told you, I think in the last few videos, um, that it's looking just generally by how the movement of the chart is currently working out. Also, the looking at the Fibonacci levels and the potential next impulse down and looking at also what I think Bitcoin is going to do most likely. It is looking as if we could really drop below that 1700 US dollar level. Yeah, I'll make you aware now because the potential for that is going up with the latest movements that Ethereum is doing. If you think about how can you say that? Well, that is just purely based on the Fibonacci extension levels and the Elliott wave count that I've got on the chart here, because in one wave um, or in a set of waves, each wave has a certain target level. And if I add all of these target levels together, we could unfortunately really see price levels here below 1700. And if we drop below 1700, we can obviously look at a potentially even three digit Ethereum. Yeah, we just need to be aware of that because we would then go to the next higher level wave count and we would then have to assume that all of this movement up was a wave one, a large wave one. All of this was a wave one and we could come down all the way theoretically, all the way down to the 88.7% FIP level, $630. Now that would be untypical, especially for a larger market cap crypto like Ethereum, but certainly the 78.6 here at $1,100 would not be unrealistic, yeah? But I said in the last video, looking at the Fibonacci extensions of the potential impulse down, we could see here realistically a $1,500 um, Ethereum, maybe even lower. But of course, it's too early to really confirm that. I mean, we're currently at 3,080, yeah? Um, it's a bit similar to when we were up here at the all-time high, and I told you that we're gonna go down into the blue target area. Also, this seemed very unrealistic, but we need to be aware of that. And this could form, a massive head and shoulders here on the chart. Can you see that left shoulder, head, right shoulder? And also in addition to that, what you see here is potentially also a huge bear flag, similar to what Bitcoin is doing at the moment. Move down, yeah, flag, pole, and then here this um, ascending wedge, which is also generally a bearish pattern. Overall, that would form a bearish flag. Um, the first target of that pattern would be the beginning of that wedge, which is sitting here down here at 2000 US dollars. Now that is generally the larger view here, looking at the MACD, there isn't really, um, it is started to look like we're gonna get a bullish crossover here on the MACD, on the weekly. Now, yes, sort of, doesn't look great, must admit, doesn't look great, don't really see that volume kick in. We have very, very little volume in the chart at the moment, very little volume. And until that changes, we're not gonna see new all-time highs. Don't think so, right? We, we have very, very little volume and we also have a lot of fear in the market at the moment, yeah? You also see here on the four-day chart, this is already decreasing. The MACD bullish momentum, the RSI is pretty much around 50, so there is not a clear signal. The market is struggling at the moment. On the one day then, okay, potential bullish crossover and that makes sense. If we take a look at my Elliott wave count that we are going to see here potentially a bullish crossover on the daily, absolutely, that makes sense. The eight hours, by the way, already turning down, but the daily is pushing higher, which means that at some point here, if the eight hours is turning down, that could continue. At some point will have an impact on the daily, but not yet. So we could still see here some further upside. And that is what I expect. Getting closer and closer here to that target range, which is starting at, $3,230. That would be here. Um, my view is here that we already, similar to Bitcoin, completed a wave four, that we already completed that wave one down. It's a very similar wave count to Bitcoin um, that we are now in this wave two up. Now a wave two to the upside should at least reach the 50% Fibonacci retracement. We already reached the 38.2 here with 3,157, so only one Fibonacci level away from the target. Um, if I need to make that a bit more accurate here. So, so around 3,238 we need to reach 
So we missed it slightly. We haven't been there. We haven't reached it yet. So I would still expect that we're going to reach the Fibonacci level here, the 50% at a minimum. Yeah, that would be normally the minimum for a wave two, but typically the cryptos move a little bit higher. So the 61.8 here at 3,320 would be realistic for that move up. That's what how I see currently Ethereum play out. So moving up first anywhere in this target range, whereas I think, find the 88.7% up here is fairly unrealistic, but possible, but still I'll narrow it down now a little bit. So anywhere in the region between the 50% FIP level at 3,238 and the 78.6 at 3,440. That's how I see this currently play out. Well, that would mean that at some point there in the green target range, we would expect the turnaround for a reversal to the downside. If that happens, what could be the target for the third wave, which is the usually the most bullish or in this case bearish wave. Let's just take a look and uh, let's just assume at the 50% FIP retracement, there would be that high, that swing high. And then we would need to reach at least the 1.618 FIP extension in the wave three. That would be 2,088 US dollars. That is the minimum. It could even go deeper. Yeah. So 200% would be fairly realistic as well. But let's just keep the 1.618 for now. Um, from here, then we would see a retracement in wave four. How much? Let's say, okay, let's say the wave three will hit. Oh, what, what level was that? Let's say the wave three will hit the yeah, $2,088 level, what would we then have to calculate in terms of the retracement for a wave four? Okay, let's just do that. And again here, for a wave four, the minimum would be the 23.6% FIP level, the ideal retracement would be the 382 so we've got it on the chart already, 2,529. And then the fifth wave would typically move down um, further, obviously. And yeah, you know, looking at it, there are different ways of how you can do a price target for a wave five. It could just be the, the length of the wave one. That is one way of doing it. And if we just do that, then we can already see that it's gonna get difficult here with that $1,700 level. So I expect the $1,700 level will, will obviously be a key decision moment here. So I'll leave it at the $1,700 level at the moment. It is a very, very key support level. Um, if that is broken, then yeah, you know, it's gonna get cold. Um, so this is how I see Ethereum play out at the moment, yeah? And I will obviously update you regularly about this movement because this can change depending on how high the wave two would come, obviously the Fibonacci levels of the next move will also change. So um, that's what many people don't understand that if I now, for example, calculate the Fibonacci target for the wave three, this of course can look entirely different in a week. Let's say if that wave two did not reach the 50% FIP retracement, but it may be reached up here the 78.6, because then that wave three target shifts from 2,088 to um, 2,236, and that will change all the other waves as well. Therefore, it is so important to get a daily or regular crypto update and not use an old video because things can change, especially with the Elliott waves. You have to recalculate the waves based on the, the extensions of the previous waves, basically. So that is changing. And uh, therefore, it's important to keep up to date. It's just uh, hopefully that makes sense. That is just needed. And um, yeah, that is where we are currently here. There is one alternative as always. So if this resistance doesn't hold and if we move above the 200 day moving average here in yellow, which is currently at 3,500, 3,500 and move out of this ascending wedge to the upside, then we can obviously get in an alternative wave, then that would be a wave A, B, C. Then we would get into this green area here that is pretty much the alternative for Bitcoin as well. But this only gets valid if we break above that wave four high. And this is at 3,591. That is why I've got it on the chart here as well as a red 
resistance level very important. So these are the two main scenarios. As you can see in both scenarios for now, I do expect higher prices, which doesn't mean that in the short term we couldn't drop a little bit lower here, making a higher low or whatever, because markets move in waves. Yeah, Nothing is moving in a straight line, but in both scenarios, I would expect higher prices. So in each of these, yeah, so either here or there. Um, this would of course be more short term because here we are gonna turn around quite quickly in the next green area. This here would be more of a time consuming move up before we probably then also move down here. So that is currently how it's looking and hopefully the $1,700 level will hold. And then in the blue target area, um, we are gonna turn around. Yeah, that has been the plan. I'm just a bit concerned about these, about this wave and the possible extensions of this wave because the way I have calculated this at the moment, it is without any extensions. If you get a w extended wave three, then we are gonna drop below 1700, pretty sure. Okay, that's my view about Ethereum. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching, bye-bye.